animals, there's so many of them. Planet Earth is just teeming with life. We are so lucky to be here. How wonderful to be on such a diverse planet. We're the only planet that has life. What are animals? Stick around. Welcome to Animal Educate. My name's Abby, and today we're going to be looking at animals and how they're organized into a system. Back in the 18th century, a Swedish man named Carolus Linnaeus decided that it was about time we organized life, so he did just that. And now every animal on the planet is classified according to this system. So there's seven major levels of classification. The first division of living things is to put them into one of five kingdoms. The five kingdoms are animals, plants, fungi, prokaryotes, and protists. Living things can then be ranked according to phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. Classification allows us to put species into particular groups based on differences and similarities, basically into biological significance. This helps us to understand how all living creatures are related and how closely they're related. In this classification system, the top level is the broadest and the most inclusive. The further down in taxa you go, the more specific you get. Kingdom is the largest and most inclusive, species is the least inclusive. The more taxonomic levels two species share, the closer related they are. So what is the binomial name? The binomial system of naming species uses Latin words. This is really helpful for scientists across the globe when they want to communicate about a particular animal. Look at the three examples on the board, the scientific name and the common name. The genus, homo, species, sapien, the common name is human. Today we're going to focus on the animal kingdom, otherwise known as animalia. There's two major animal groups, there's vertebrates and invertebrates. Vertebrates are animals that have a backbone inside their body. The major groups include fish, mammals, amphibians, reptiles and birds. Most vertebrates have a skeleton that's made of bone, but some, like the shark and the ray, their skeleton's actually made of cartilage and gristle. Mammals are within the class Mammalia, and if an animal drinks milk as a baby, they're classed as a mammal. They're also vertebrates, and they have a neocortex. That basically means they've got higher brain functioning. They've also mostly got hair, free middle ear bones, and mammary glands. Birds have feathers and are born from eggs, and actually, birds are the only animal that has feathers. Because their tail and their wings overlap, it means that they can hold air, which obviously means that they can fly. Birds are a collection of warm-blooded vertebrates. They're identified by feathers, they're toothless, and they have beaked jaws. They lay hard-shelled eggs, and they have a four-chambered heart. Fish are vertebrates that live in the water. They have fins, gills, and scales over their body. There's so many different types of fish out there, and some of them look extremely odd. They're like aliens. Fish are an aquatic species. They don't have limbs with digits. Reptiles are air breathing. They're covered in special skin made up of scales or bony plates or both. They all regularly shed the outer layer of their skin and their metabolism depends on the temperature of their environment. All reptiles produce eggs and most lay hard shelled eggs, but a few give birth to live young. Reptiles are also cold blooded, which means they can't control their own body temperature. Amphibians are born in water, so when they're born, they can breathe using their gills. As they get older, they can develop lungs so they can breathe out on land. Amphibians are cold-blooded vertebrates with four limbs, and they fall within the class Amphibia. Invertebrates groups are Arachnida, insects, crustaceans, myriapodas, Echinodermata, Mollusca, Annelida, Platyhelminths, Cnidaria, and Porifera. Invertebrates don't have a backbone. Instead, They'll have either a soft body, like worms and jellyfish, or they'll have a hard outer shell which covers their whole body, like spiders or crabs. They're found in all habitats. They include a very diverse range of animals. These include sponges, corals, worms and spiders. Crabs, mussels and octopi are also invertebrates. Insects make up the largest group. So we've looked at animal classification, binomial names, and animal groups. 
I love just how many animals there are out there that we can learn about. You can never stop learning when it comes to the life on Earth. We're still discovering new species every single day. 18,000 a year actually. We've discovered about 1.2 million species. Scientists think there's about another 8.7 million to discover. So you'll never ever stop learning when it comes to animals. Thank you so much for watching today guys. Please do if you've enjoyed the video give it a like and subscribe to my channel and also hit that bell if you want to receive regular content. See ya!